Hi, in this episode, I'm going to talk about how I made this multi layer light base for edgelet acrylic. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And today's episode is the second episode of a three episode series. And the first episode was a review of Rocket Life programmable lights. And I'm really excited about those. It's what you see running here because they finally let me do a project I've had in mind for over three years. My goal is to do a multi-layer edge lit acrylic landscape with custom lighting behind it. That's not what you see here. This is just six pieces of acrylic from prior projects that I've pulled to stick in the base to test the, the base. And the program that's running is just a little demo program. The base here though is what today's episode is about, how I made it and how I designed it. It's designed in Adobe Illustrator. The parts are cut on a laser cutter. I had to cut up the Rocket Life light strips, solder them together, and put them into the six slots that you see here that can hold acrylic up to 18 inches wide. So this is the base I'm going to use for my project in the next episode. But in this episode, I'm going to tell you how I designed it and made it. I start the design by creating a scale model of the light strip, and I have to capture all the main dimensions, the width of the strip, the distance between the lights, the size of the lights. I use a green outline version of this to lay out the base. I have six strips, and the red lines here are cut lines for my laser. The quarter inch thickness is a little smaller than the light strips, so I have to center them right over the lights. With this general layout in mind, I can lay out each of the pieces of the base. On the bottom layer, I'm putting engraving lines, these blue lines, to help me position the light strips correctly. And I have four holes for brads that will hold the base together. The next layer has a cutaway for the light strips, but I've gone ahead and engraved those lines again so I have this board to work with when I'm doing the actual wiring of the lights. And then I have little cutouts in the back. One of those will be where the wire goes out to the light box. These bottom two layers will be glued together and I'll be able to use these brads to hold the top on, but I'll be able to separate them so I can get back to the lights if I need to. I'm gonna have four layers on top to hold the acrylic. The acrylic slots line up as we planned on top of the lights. And I've made these four brad holes just a tad larger so that this will actually slide on and off. But I have another set of registration holes that are going to help me put together the top. I'm going to cut three copies of that layer, but I have one layer that is just clear, no holes, and that's the top layer. You'll see in the assembly process how I put those four layers together. The last step is to lay out the actual cut sheet, and all six of these pieces fit on one two foot by four foot piece of plywood. Two bottom layers and four top layers that will all be glued together. Here's the job running on the laser cutter. The first step is always to engrave before the cutting is done. And then here it is cutting. It took an hour and a half for me to engrave and cut the six pieces. First I assemble the three layers that are both glued and nailed together. I like to use 4 inch granite samples for weights on these kinds of projects. Then I put the top face down, I put on the glue, I put the three layers on, I hammer in the nails the last little bit, turn it over, make sure everything's aligned, and set it to dry. The bottom's even easier, I just need to glue these edges on, and I use clips to hold this while it's drying. I have hammered the four brads in from the bottom so they'll stay in place. I use that cutaway board to lay out my wiring. I cut each of the strips to the proper length and I strip away the clear weatherproofing from the top of each end. These arrows show how it's going to be zigzagging back and forth across the board. Each connection will have three wires. I'm using white for the ground, red for the power, and black for the signal that runs in the middle. After determining the length I want to work with, I cut enough of each color, and I twist and tin the ends with solder. Then I carefully put a little bit of solder on each of the pads, the three pads on each end of the strip. Now to make a connection, all I need to do is hold the right wire over the right pad, hold the soldering iron on it for a second, and it'll melt and connect. 
I tested after connecting each strip, but my final test is here with the six strips connected together. I did a six group design in the Rocket Life Light Designer, put a different color in each, and everything seems to be working. The last step is to install the lights in the base. Here's the top ready to go. It slides right on over those four brads that are sticking out. Soldered connections are remarkably strong, but you obviously have to be careful as you put this in. You're removing adhesive strips from the back and you're lining it up along the engraved lines that you've put in the base. There are 84 lights in this design, which is about a strip and a half of lights, so to drive that at full power, I get a 6 amp adapter to run it. And this is when I grabbed six random pieces of edgelet acrylic and put them in the base. And here's the chaos you see when they're all lit up. So just for the fun of it, I decided to run the demo reel that comes with the lights. And even though it's only set up to drive 60 lights, you could see some really interesting patterns evolve. So I decided to create a little demo of my own. I turned on all 84 lights. This is no grouping, it's just one group. It's one preset called back and forth spear. And I did three color variations. And this is how it looks. And I, I think it's amazing. So now I'm going to create a custom design for this base, a landscape, and try to do sunrise and sunset and other interesting sky things behind it. If you want to see how that turns out, tune in for my next video and please subscribe to my channel.